This example raises a new issue. Give it a shot. Let's begin by redrawing our picture. After you redraw, make sure you check to make sure that you checked um, that you redrew correctly. Now, what we generally do now is look for the initial tail. Uh, but I think that we might be a little stymied here when we look for the initial tail. There really is no initial tail because here we have a whole cycle of arrows. Um, so, for example, suppose we thought this was the initial tail. Well, then we might think that this is the abdomen of the initial tail, but this actually also has a head coming into it. Because we have a whole cycle of arrows, there's no initial tail and there's no initial head. They're moving in a circle, so this head is pointing to an atom that's also in a tail. Um, anything that we tried to pick as the initial tail wouldn't be initial because there would be another head pointing to it. All right, so we don't worry about the initial tail. Um, instead, um, let's just pick a tail and start with it. So let's pick this tail over here. We could pick any tail we wanted. Let's pick this, and let's make the change that's di uh, required by this. Well, this tail is coming from the middle of a pie bond. That means we have to erase the pi bond. And should we change any charges? Well, remember, we always change the charge of the atom that's at the initial tail and the final head. We always change the charge of the atom at the initial tail and the final head. In this case, there is no initial tail and there is no final head. So that must mean that we're not going to change any charges. Since there's no initial tail and there's no final head, we're not going to change any charges. So there's no charges to change. So we can erase this tail. This head is pointing to the middle of the sigma bond. That means we're making a pi bond. So I'll draw that pi bond. And on this problem, we're not changing any charges. So I erase that head. This tail indicates we're moving the pi bond. We erase the pi bond. No need to change any charges, so I erase that tail. This head is pointing towards the middle of a sigma bond, which means we're making a pi bond. We're not changing any charges, so we erase that head. This tail is coming from pi bond, so we erase the pi bond. Again, no need to change any charges. So we erase the tail. And here we are at this head. Um, now, this head is pointing to the middle of the sigma bond, which means we're making a pi bond. So we draw that pi bond. But again, on this problem, we're not changing any charges. Now remember, this is not the final head. It kind of looks like the final head now because we've erased all the other arrows. But if you look at this picture, you can see this is not really the final head because there's another tail coming um, out from this atom right over here. In this problem, there really was no final head and, uh, because before we started erasing things, every atom that was at a head was also at a tail. So even though in this picture it looks like this, looks like it, there is no final head. So there's no charges to change. So we simply erase that arrow. Well, I hope that now uh, your inclination is to check that the net charge is balanced. Well, in this picture, there's no charge. And in the right-hand structure, there's no charge. So the charge is balanced. So in this problem, we learned what to do when you have a cycle of arrows. That is, when you have the arrows going all the way around in a cycle so that there's no initial tail and there's no initial head. Since there's no initial tail and no initial head, we don't change any charges. Uh, and you can see that um, more clearly here. So for example, would it have made sense to change the charge on this atom? Well, you might have said that you should, um, you should change the charge because this atom is losing this pi bond. This atom is at this tail, so it's losing the pi bond. But after all, this top carbon is also gaining a pi bond from the head. It lost the pi bond on the left, but it gained the pi bond on the right. Well, we can say that for all the atoms. They all lost a pi bond and gained a pi bond. So that confirms that it doesn't make sense to change any of the charges. The lesson, again, is that we change the charge of the atom at the initial tail and the atom at the final head. If you have a cycle of arrows, then there is no initial tail, and there is no, initial, and there is no final head. So for a cycle of arrows, you don't change any charges. Try this example. Begin by redrawing your picture. Next, make sure that you correctly redrew your picture. All right, then we look for an initial tail. But there's not going to be any initial tail here because, again, we have a whole cycle of arrows. For example, suppose that you thought that this atom was at the initial tail. 
Well, this atom is at a tail, but it's also at this head. So it's not at the initial tail. We could say the same thing for every other atom. Say this atom over here. Well, um, this atom is at this tail, but it's also at this head. So this is not the initial tail either. Well, there's no atom that we can identify as being at a tail, but not at a head. So uh, this is a whole cycle here. There's no initial tail or initial head. That tells us right off the bat, we're not going to change any charges. We're not going to be changing any charges. So which tail should we start with? Whatever we like. There is no initial tail, so we can start with whichever tail we like. So let's start with this tail over here. Uh, we erase this pi bond. No need to change any charges, so we erase the tail. This head indicates we're forming a pi bond. No charges to change. Erase the head. This tail indicates that we're erasing the pi bond. No need to change charges. This head indicates that we're forming a pi bond. Again, no charges to change. We're not changing any charges on this problem. This tail indicates that we erase the pi bond. Erase the tail. This head indicates that we're forming a pi bond. Erase the head. This tail indicates that we're uh, erasing a pi bond. And we can erase that tail. This head means that we're forming a pi bond. Erase the head. The tail means that we're erasing the pi bond. And we erase the tail. And now this head indicates that we're forming the pi bond. Now remember that even though it looks like it in this picture, this is not a final head. In this picture, you can see that this head is actually leading directly into this tail over here. So we erase the head without changing any charges. Let's check that the net charge is balanced. The net charge in this picture is zero, and the net charge in this picture is zero. So our charge is balanced. Now I put some more electron pushing arrows into this resonance structure. Try drawing the next resonance structure that is suggested by these arrows. We'll start by redrawing our last picture. I've redrawn this picture down here. Make sure you check that you redrew it correctly. Again, we look for an initial tail, but again, we're not going to find any initial tail because again, we have a whole cycle of arrows. Now here, we're not using the entire molecule, but we're still using enough to form a complete cycle. So there's still no initial tail. So we simply choose whichever tail we want to be our initial tail. Let's say we're starting here. Uh, by the way, one thing you might have noticed is that in this picture, I drew this resonance arrow inside the ring, and here I drew it outside the ring, but there's no significance to that at all. There's no significance to whether you draw the resonance, uh, the electron pushing arrows inside or outside the ring. That doesn't have any meaning. At this tail, we erase the pi bond. And since we're dealing with a cycle of arrows, we're not going to change any charges. We erase that tail. At this head, we form a pi bond, and we erase the head. At this tail, we erase the pi bond and erase the tail. This head means we're forming a pi bond. Erase the head. This tail means that we're moving a pi bond. Erase the pi bond. Erase the tail. And this head indicates that we're forming a pi bond. So I'll draw that new pi bond. Again, this is not the final head. You can see clearly from this picture that this head is followed by another tail. So there's no charges to change here. So here we have another valid resonance structure. We can check that by looking at the net charges. We already decided the net charge in this picture is zero, and the net charge in this picture is also zero. 